Volunteer. That is, don't be afraid. I went to um, UCF three years ago to one of their engineering workshops, and I, talk, I was talking about my job, and at the end of the presentation, this UCF student came to me and said, I want to do what you're doing. What do I need to do? And I said, volunteer. That's, that's the best thing. There's no jobs out there. This is the best time to volunteer because people are looking for, employers are looking for free labor. Uh, so um, I got to work, that was a fr uh, Friday. I got to work Monday and I had an email from her saying, can I volunteer with you? <laughs> and I was like, wow, that was fast. So I emailed her back and I said, sure. Uh, come over and we can talk. I have so a project that I'm going to be studying. It's a pilot study, and you can work on it. And guess what? Today she's working for me full time. She came volunteer. What she was volunteering with me, I convinced her to continue her environmental engineering at her master degree. I said the market is really bad. I found some money, grant money, and I paid her a little bit for gas and. Uh, she stayed with me, she graduated, now she's a full-time student, and she found a boyfriend in my place, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud of my baby engineer. Um, yeah, but truly, uh, that's the way to do it. Volunteer out there, and don't be afraid what, people will say what, yes or no. If they say no, you say why? And if they say we are not hiring people because there's a lot of attorneys law these days that prohibit some employers from hiring. But uh, you can ask, uh, do you know anybody that will, that will take volunteers? And usually people know, and they will give you some good advice. Well, I don't know if I have any advice for high schoolers, because I was an odd high schooler. But <laughs> I did everything really but math and science, because those were not my best subjects in school. I don't know if I'm a good example in that. But <laughs> I did better in history and English. <laughs> I almost failed uh, math and science, even into college. <laughs> and, and yes, I'm in a science field now. So it just goes to show, even if math and science are not your, your best subjects, um, if you love them enough, you can, you can make it through the classes. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I would say always pr pursue whatever your, your dream is, because I did uh, everything in high school. I played volleyball, I did ROTC, I dabbled in band, I did mock trial, I did peer mediation. Um, if there was an after school activity, I probably participated in it at some point or another. Um, just because I wanted to see what was out there and to, and to try everything. And in some ways, I guess it gave me a good background. Um, and it, it helps me now um, being in a science field and so many people I know um, in, 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 in my field are just, it's all science, it's all weather, it's all meteorology. And I go out and pursue my sort of my art side where I do photography and I paint and I sew and I crochet and um, other things that make me sound like uh, um, a grandma. But uh, I, I, it just, it makes me a more well-rounded individual. So even if you're, even if you love science um, or math or engineering, just remember to uh, sort of round yourself out and look at uh, the, the other side of the uh, academic spectrum as well. Yeah, so like I mentioned before, um, all math and science is not the same. So for me, if I had made decisions based on, okay, math and science, I, like I said, I, geometry wasn't my favorite, um, but I loved uh, the algebra side. Um, physics was okay, but I loved chemistry much more. And so, you know, if you take a math class or a science class and it's not your thing, uh, try, try a different one, right? You may find one of those that is your passion and, and you can kind of follow that. So. Don't let one thing that you're not good at or one thing that you're not as interested in um, discourage you from, from trying other things. I think I would also say just what is the, if you find something that you're willing to stay up late at night to read more about or you actually look forward to doing that homework, um, I love solving problems. For me, it was just loving to solve problems. I would take things, I wanted to know how things work. I would take them apart and just, you know, what's underneath? 
Um, so find that passion, whatever it is, and, and, and go with that. And it may be subtle, and, it, and you may find it in your extracurricular activities as well, but find that one thing that you're passionate about because you're going to be doing it for a long time. <laughs> Um, if you're if you're at all interested in programming, I think I think the best advice is think about something that's that's missing in your life, some sort of tool, or maybe even like a game that you would like to play that you think others would like to play, uh, and just and try to make it yourself, and that that usually helps you figure out just the the theory of developing something that other people are going to have to use, and it could be. Um, Kind of like what Mindy was saying about volunteering, you could find a local business that might need help. Maybe they need a website or something like that. You could build a website for them, and in the process of building that website, you might learn different things about programming, and it'll, it'll help you with the process of developing specifications and then programming to those specifications. Uh, I know that's really specific to programming and people are giving more general advice about high school. I do like um, what Arlena said about extracurricular activities. Uh, I, was in, I was in band and, uh, and the color guard for all of high school and I feel like that it really just helped in learning how to, how to multitask because you have, you have homework and you have your extracurricular activities and you have to learn how to balance them and that's a lot what real life is going to be like in the long run. So. Maybe there's a theme there. I was in band in color guard as <laughs> yeah. well, so awesome. maybe there's a theme there. I was right? a flag. What were you? Yeah, flag. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So when I, when I was in high school, um, actually my extracurricular activities didn't have to do so much about math or science. Part of our requirement in the program was that we volunteered at a hospital because it was a pre-med program. So, but I think volunteer, I think they should make it mandatory actually in high schools for kids to do some level of volunteer work just to get them out into the real world and get them kind of like a, a little view into the world. Um, so that for me was really good, but that was mandatory for that specific program. But the actual extracurricular stuff I did, um, international club, tennis team, volleyball, I mean, I was into that stuff. But I think honestly that is what this, because my grades were good, but the, I think the other stuff that I did were the reasons why I was able to get two full scholarships, um, which today with the cost of education is definitely something you'd want to push for. But um, coming into into high school and high school and then your first couple of years in college, I would say, like I know there's a big push for kids to do summer classes, and I almost think it's a slight mistake because I, you're pushing and you're rushing almost your schooling. And I see a lot of kids not getting that hands on. And literally, they'll be at 20, and they would have a four-year degree, so two years earlier. But then they would spend the year kind of lost. I've seen it around me because um, I, I work with a lot of UCF students. I do career talks there. Um, so I'm not sure that that's the best thing for kids because you're, you're taking away the time in the summer where they should be out doing small jobs. And I mean, I was very impressed. I, I did, um, I ran the internship program at Johnson & Johnson for my department, and so we looked over the resume. So when, a, when you're looking at a, a resume from a freshman in college, so of course they don't have industry experience, but I, this resume caught my attention. This uh, one, one student who worked um, as a bagger at Publix, and it wasn't just, oh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna make, you know, minimum wage, I'm a bagger at Publix. This individual, this female, was able to, um, you know, where they have to stand to actually do the bagging, you have to stand on a mat. She was able to actually convince their manager to look at different materials for that mat and order different materials. And that's, it, it's a field called ergonomics, which is huge. And, and we all work in the industry where, you know, when you have um, workers working in a, a particular repetitive motion, ergonomics is something that's key because you don't want them hurting themselves, re repeat motion all the time. But here's somebody, a very young person, freshman in college, that took their bagging job at Publix and turned it into an engineering um, uh, aspect and learned a lot from it. So for them to go from, I'm a bagger at Publix, did the research on the material for the mats and different mats, come up with a plan and convince the manager to invest in it. I'm like, that's an intern I would hire, and I did hire for, for one summer at, um, at uh, Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> <laughs>